Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Everybody sing. Hey everybody, this is Alex, I'm in red, that's the ramble in yellow, and of all this is New York City where we're coming to you from, from live until midnight tonight. That's Lori Thompson, it's another week, it's another Lori Thompson, it's another outfit for Lori Thompson because it's, it, of course it it's next week, she's not wearing the same clothes she wore last week. God, I am, no. but I don't change my clothes, I've, I've given up life. Actually, what is that? Is that a huggy? Is that one of those? Like, no, I've given up. Um, like, Marjorie has one of these too, and she has the same pajama pants. <laughs> and 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 we have these. We got these great little slippers from yeah, what are uh, they like? Because from uh, Bombas, from Bombas. They're, they're Bombas, the ones that donate a, a pair of socks. Yeah, for yeah, me. yeah. Well, we these are Bombas. these are. Uh, I don't know if I can show them to you. Well, here I'll take one off and I can show it to you. This and is do they have they, things this on is what the they look or? like. This is what they oh, look like. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, that's and cute. it's like it's a slipper, but it's not like slippers, you know. And it's kind of like, like it's like walking around. around in your socks. You know? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But they're, they're slippers, and they, uh, they. I'm trying these new ones, which I have to get used to, which have a double foam on the bottom, so they're especially soft. You know. Yay. So Marjorie has those. I have. She has these, but she got me one. And then uh, we have these, um, I, I don't know if I can stand up here and you can see it. I don't know. No, you can't see it. Oh, well. They're, uh, they're like, uh, they're, it's not like they're pajama bottoms or anything. They're like just lounging pants. And she, yeah, has, yeah. And she has the same ones. And Very uh, cool. so we look disgustingly like a married couple. <laughs> you, know. you should do that as your Christmas card. Oh, I bet you probably do Hanukkah cards. Yeah. You, I was just thinking that would make such a cute Christmas photo of you two in your matching plaids. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I, yeah, I think that uh, as far as the fashion transitions one has to make uh, as we age, um, I read an article that said, just find out what looks good on you. Don't be a slave to fashion. Just find out what your style is and then find selections that go with your style. You know, don't get the latest thing that everybody's wearing. Find out what's comfortable and what's your style. So, yeah. very nice. You look like a lumberjack. Yeah. He's a lumberjack and he's so cute. <laughs> one, one of the signs of the, the leukemia I supposedly have is uh, that you uh, you lose weight. Oh. And, you know, the doctor asked me, uh, have, you, uh, have you lost weight? I have to go, I just bought a new pair of pants that are bigger. Okay, does that answer your <laughs> question? I wish I could lose weight. I could, if I could get cancer for just ten minutes and and lose cancer weight, with fat. you know, <laughs> yeah, just like one of those, like you know, uh, voluntary, just sign up by the hour counts. I, I do ask people about how I look because I, I don't look like I'm dying, do I? No. Okay. No, and you know what? No, you look healthy. I look healthy, okay, because yeah. everybody that I see, like uh, Richard Lewis, if you watched him before, when he was on Curb Your Enthusiasm this year, you could tell the guy was on his way to death, okay? Yeah. He just does not look healthy, right? Yeah. Uh, and um, then my friend Shecky, before he died, I noticed he was walking very slowly, like little measured steps one in front of the other. And so I keep every time I walk, I try to walk a little more sprightly. I don't want yeah. that to happen to me. But you know, people who are are dying, they say, "Oh, he was so. How did? Why did he die? He was looking so good. He wasn't looking good. He was looking like he was dying." Why do people, in fact, when someone dies, they just launch this web of lies? You know, or they oh, look in the just... coffin and they say he looks great. I said, "No, he doesn't. He's dead." He looks dead. He looks embalmed. You know, that's, I don't know why people do that, too. In fact, I've seen lately some people get up at funerals and say, let's not whitewash it. <laughs> So-and-so had their peccadilloes and their Well, uh, my friend uh, uh, Paul Krasner, who died, God, they all uh -huh. died. Where, 
Well, these are people who died, died. They died. <laughs> Like Jim Carroll is dead. That's the funny part he about is. it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, he, um, um, uh, who was I talking about? <laughs> You're talking about uh, Paul. Get, oh, Paul, Paul uh, Krasner. Krasner really. He said that when he died, and I don't know if he did it, I'm hoping that he did, said that he was going to have somebody come in and put clown makeup on his face. So that when people came and looked at the open casket, they'd come out of the funeral parlor laughing. Right. And nobody would know why. They couldn't understand. Paul's dead. What's he laughing about? He just came. And then they go in and they go, oh, I understand. Oh, that was great. I get it. <laughs> well, I told but you I my don't, idea. I don't think he ever did it. Anyway, what? Not my idea that's going to make us money in our sleep. We can take it on Shark Tank. We'll, mm -hmm. uh, it is do your own funeral. Like, you know, like the old records they used to send when you do interviews, and mm -hmm. they also send you a script. And so on the record were cuts by Patsy Klein, you know, uh, were interview questions that mm -hmm. she had answered for all these stations, stations. And then you would just provide the, the announcer, and then the next cut would be. Played. Right. I remember that. <laughs> In fact, people like you, though, I think started doing things like like you knew you well, saw I took one of those once and then I changed the <laughs> questions they would send you out they would say <laughs> you want you want an interview with Jack Nicholson yeah okay and then you get this disc or tape yeah. or whatever and then it would uh, you'd have Jack Nicholson's voice answering the questions and they were like little split spaces where you could splice yourself in yeah so what I did is I changed the questions <laughs> <laughs> well, it all started down in a little country church, yeah. and then and you instead yeah. of obviously the question was where did your singing career begin, yeah. but you would change that question to now I hear you had a little drinking problem at one point, Patsy, yeah. and what was you know where did that start? Yeah. Well, it all That's started in a little, little country. Church. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> you, know, yeah, you remember those interviews? Now huh? they don't do them anymore, but. Yeah, I I heard of them. I don't think I ever did one in radio, but uh, yeah, oh yeah, I knew of that. And in fact, when I listen to the radio, and it will they'll play a cut in actuality, if you used to call them a cut of some celebrity, mm -hmm. and I go first of all, that's not the question that was asked. You can and you realize that you can make someone say anything, say anything, by just how you how you couch it. You know, I've been spending a lot of time with you the last couple of days. The reason yeah. is I've been going onto my Roku channel and adding new videos of, of like vacations oh. I had taken and so on. Yeah. And, and you're on quite a few of them. I have you on one of us going to Topeka. And, oh, yeah. Um, you know, so I you're uh, you're in quite a few of them. Uh, well, that'd be fun. You, and you, you, you don't I have a Roku, that? do you? I don't, but I'll get one. If get one because i got a, a GabNet channel. And you can find yeah. those videos there, you know. Okay, because I would love to. You always, it was fun to travel with you. You were always making videos. I never saw something. any of the countries I was in. I no, just saw them through a viewfinder. And, and you were uh, one of those people who went out and actually found things of, of note, you know, of yeah. like, like architecturally and, and things, uh, tourist sites. Yeah. And I would be like, just walking around looking at the people the whole time. Otherwise. My trouble is now all I have is I have a GoPro, I have a very good GoPro, and I have a couple of other cameras, okay? Uh -huh. But I don't have any of the kind of cameras I used to shoot with, with had zoom lenses and so on and so forth, where I could be artistic with my photography. You really can't be as artistic with a GoPro because yeah. it's kind of more real time, you know? Uh, oh yeah, what you took? I think broadcast quality. You made broadcast quality little film. Well, that, that's what, what I've got. If you want to see it, if you got a Roku, go to the Gabnet channel, and it's there under Gabnet Theater. I put up a whole bunch of new videos there. Oh, fun! Yeah. I would totally. do I, I only that. had about five, five, four of my vacations, and now there are like seventeen up there, or something like. Oh, they're so fun. That's what I really loved about traveling with you. We had something that we could look at and well, laugh I, at. One I, that I put up there was the one with the Bobby Slayton in the Alps uh, when we went to the uh, to uh, uh, Alberville for the yeah. Winter Olympics. I suddenly realized you didn't go with us, did you? I didn't go because that was, uh, I was at sleepaway camp. <laughs> you were at sleepaway camp, yeah. My, yeah, and so uh, I did not go get that. And that was when I really 
noticed. It's like you got to give up some of your habits because they are getting in the way of you having a life, Thompson. Yeah. So that's but that's what I did. But the others are like um, Ibiza. Well, we went to um, you know but Barcelona. We're Barcelona. going to Barcelona on this next cruise. Yeah, um, oh, it, it, oh, good. Yeah, yeah. I cannot wait. Do not uh, take do not take anything out on the streets with you that they can steal. That is oh, the biggest purse heard. snatching uh, yeah. town in the well, world. Well, Rick, uh, Rick for Christmas wanted all this stuff is travel oriented, and I got him one of these packs. It's like a fanny pack, but you wear it up higher, so all the things of value. We put it in there, and then it fits under a coat, you know, a blazer. Yeah, it's under a coat, but if it's strapped to you, it's a little harder for them to get. A purse is something exactly. they can just, you know. That was our thinking, yeah. And I don't, um, plus I'm real cautious. Yeah. Ever since we, when we went to Greenwich Village, we did the show from New York yeah. for a week, and I got uh, robbed inside the store in Greenwich Village, and I got my purse back. So ever since then, I've been very uh, aware, very you know, conscious of that. Uh, the Barcelona videos, where, I don't know where, I can't find the Barcelona video. I do have the video of, uh, do I have us in Ibiza? No, I don't have us in Ibiza. Well, it was the part of, it was, remember we went to Barcelona and then we went to Ibiza. I think yeah, we but, went to Ibiza. and I'm sure I have a video I did of Barcelona, but I can't find it anywhere. So it might but be in did. storage, might be in storage. Yeah. And the funniest, I can still see parts of that video in my head. There was one we did, uh, I'm Too Sexy for this song. And it was me shopping and trying on all this, like, sexy Spanish. Yep. Yeah, uh, where funny. is that one? I wonder, I've got to see if I can find it. Maybe I, can, maybe that, I have it. I don't know. But anyway, so, uh, and also it ended with you and I in bed together. Yes. And having <laughs> sex. Going crazy, <laughs> just... Oh, Lori, oh, Alex, and it goes blank, and you can just hear us yeah. going, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Use your imagination. Yeah. And did you know that Patton Oswalt has a book out? Um, the, re the reason I think of that, there's something yeah. in, yeah, I don't know uh, if, if we're mentioned at all or the station, but he did mention something you just spoke of that, that uh, made me think of it, and uh, the special that you did. And uh, so Patton Oswalt has written a really fun book, about his affection for movies and seeing old classic movies in their big screen format, like at the New Beverly down yeah. in Los Angeles. It's really fun. I think he talks a lot about San Francisco. I'm only like eight pages in. So, oh, okay. Um, maybe it, he'll mention us. Who knows? Maybe. You never know. That's We'll see. Because hopefully, one day hopefully. I got a call from Patton. He's very nice. He's a nice guy. Uh, I got a call from Pat, and he said, "Hi, it's Pat, and I just want to tell you I'm in San Francisco, and I'm shooting a, a special for HBO, and I just wanted to thank you because I wouldn't be doing any of this if it wasn't for you." You know, isn't that wonderful? Isn't and, and, sweet? and I just, I, I, you know, that really that was one of the nicer things that somebody's done. The one, the best one was Robert Schimmel. You and, know, and when what you're did he do? when you're out of work, and believe me, at times I was out of work. Mm -hmm. and and you're not at the radio station anymore, you don't hear from the comics. You don't hear from anybody. Right. All of a sudden, you don't got a job, you don't got friends. You know, they just disappear. It's not that they disappear, they just out of sight, out of mind, you know? Yeah. And some of them, quite frankly, felt they had no use for me anymore. Yeah, yeah. it makes you realize uh, the caliber of the person you're dealing with. I got, I, those experiences were very humbling for me. Yeah, I bet. But Robert Schimmel, when I was out of work, would always call me and say, let's have sweet? dinner. Let's have dinner. Yeah. How you doing? Or, or at least, at the very least, he would say, how you doing? Everything okay? You dealing with this all right? You know, listen, let's get together, whatever. Schimmel never forgot. Yeah. And, and that that's why I can so never forget Schimmel, you know? Yeah. Well, and then it seemed it seems that a lot of the comics that we that we had on Norm Macdonald, who wasn't a lot, have passed away. Now, yeah. did Schimmel pass away? Yeah, yeah. Here's what, what happened with Schimmel. Schimmel had had cancer, many types of cancer. He had three different types of cancer throughout his life. He wrote a book uh, that he was promoting when he came in to see me at uh, Sirius XM. That was called "The Cancer on Five Dollars a Day," uh, <laughs> and. Um, he um, 
I had cancer, and finally, uh, you know, I get a call from somebody who says, "Have you heard Robert Schimmel's dead?" And I went, "Well, you know, the cancer finally got him." I said, "The cancer finally yeah. got him." He says, "No, he was driving with his daughter, and she crashed into a tree." Really? He died in a car crash. Isn't they irony like just Sam a complete Kennedy? irony? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you knew that there would. Everybody thought, "Well, they'll be." Drunk driving or high driving involved in Sam's well, death, it, but somebody else's, wasn't it? When Sam was the Sam Kinison, he was uh, he was driving to Vegas, and it was mm -hmm. a drunk driver that hit his car. Yeah, you know, and, and we we said well, we always knew it was going to be drugs that would kill Sam. We just didn't realize they'd be in somebody else's body. <laughs> right. The mm -hmm. irony. Life is. I mean, the irony to me is just almost amusing. Sam was I mean, also was, very good to us, too. Oh, Sam was great. Yeah. I remember the first time I met him, it was like, um, I think you said, hey, this is my newswoman. Um, and he said, I'm doing this thing at Wolfgang's. You want to introduce me? And so that night I got to introduce him at uh, the old Wolfgang's. Yeah. And so that was very fun. He was just real. Yeah, very nice. Uh, a very nice guy. People don't realize yeah. how nice he was. How, However... If he didn't like you, yeah, like Did he, you and he hated the same person. Oh, I know that we were. Who do we hate? Mark Marin. Mark Marin. Oh yeah, but Marin though, I've changed my tune on Marin just because I read. I've read a lot of interviews, and he has a humility now that he didn't have then. And also, we were both drinking a lot. Not, not together. We didn't drink together. But I think we were both well, battling. Uh, Marin, Marin, yes. uh, I remember once you you came in, you were on the show, and Marin was doing something, and you finally just said, are there any people in Hollywood you haven't used yet? That was your <laughs> line. Uh, well, yeah, because, I mean, and I just, he wasn't paying you, I didn't think, any respect in his remarks, and he was sitting there reading the Chronicle while you were, you know, getting, so you were doing the show. Yeah. And yeah. I thought, and I, they were, there was talk of him, like filling in for you one day that week. And I just um, went into the general manager's office and I unloaded. And I said, get me, get a substitute for me on that day or those days because I'm not working for him. Uh, anyway. I, yeah. yeah. Uh, I just Mark Maron, uh, Sam Kinison hated Mark Maron so much that when Mark Maron was working at the comedy store, he was living at the comedy store a house which was up on comedy the hill condo. from the comedy store, the comedy condo, and yeah. they would put people up there. Mm -hmm. And he was staying there kind of permanently. And uh, one day, Kinnison was up there and he looked around and he said, Oh, that's Mark Marin's bed over there. So, Mark, so he walked over to Mark's bed, pulled out his dick, and peed all over the bed. <laughs> that's how he and felt about Mark Marin. And can you imagine if you're Marin coming in and no one had told you or you didn't know that Sam had peed in your bed and so you lay down and you're falling asleep like, man, it smells like this in here. Yeah. <laughs> I got to take more if, showers. If, if, if Sam didn't like you, he didn't like you. you know? mm, very true. And he was, um, he was from the Midwest. He was from Illinois. And when he was doing his preaching, mm -hmm. there is a good chance that I as a teenager might have been in some of his tent revivals well, he, we he was a child to, preacher as well right they had him working as a child was, preacher and, and yeah. i i really think that i have seen him i mean i have childhood glimpses i think that i have seen him preach yeah, yeah maybe it's just something i've convinced myself of because of what i read and how familiar it sounded well that's where but, he got his scream of pain was that that kind of preaching that ah. yeah yeah and uh, see, when we had a minister that would have been about 12, and I was young then, so, I mean, I was younger, a little bit younger than Kennison. And um, so I remember someone coming, this Wonder Boy preacher, mm -hmm. coming to our place, and he was fire and brimstone. Yeah, yeah. So, but, <laughs> I, yeah, these, yeah I, I did a, a quick documentary once uh, for Midnight Blue on a, preacher uh, a youth pre a kid preacher that was and, mm -hmm. and in fact strange we went it was up here at harlem at the avalon ballroom that the, they were doing their sh little show or whatever you want to call yeah. it and uh i'm interviewing the kid in the room where he's going to preach that night and i suddenly mm -hmm. realized i'm in the room where malcolm x was 
killed. Whoa. Was that, that had to be a mind blower. Yeah, I, would I suddenly to- realized, Av- Avalon Ballroom, yeah. This is the room where Mal- Malcolm, yeah. They said, yes, this is the room Malcolm X got killed in. And was the minister Marjo Gortner? There Marjo was Marge- Gortner was a kid preacher, too. Yeah. And they're, they're a phenomenon, or they were at the time. Now, we're so media uh, jaded. Whatever happened you know, to Marjo <laughs> Gortner? He made a couple of movies, and then that was it. Probably, uh, yeah. He, he might own a couple Chick-fil-A's in Sherman Oaks or something, but Could I don't be. know. He, yeah. That's, probably what, you, something that's what you want to own is a Chick-fil-A. Yeah. <laughs> Sunday's off. You that and you can off. get yourself a what's what's that one where they have the uh, the Bible track on the bottom of the cup? Uh, oh yeah, the Bible verse. Yeah, um, it's a very famous uh, hamburger place in Southern California. I can't yeah, remember. Is it Fat Burger? Fa- or no, Whataburger. No, something like what a, that. What yeah. would you what'd you say? Bur- what was the other? Whataburger. No. Whataburger. No. Uh, something burger. I don't know. Anyway. Burger. Anyway. But on the bottom burger. of the cups, they got this like. You know, ten forty one or what? I don't know what those. John sixteen is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Game. You know yeah, those. I don't. Book. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you, you still so know it's your. Kind of long. You still know your Bible, right? I do somewhat. Yeah. yeah. Now, is your is your husband religious? He was raised Catholic and kind of just drifted away from any organized religion. Yeah. Now, when I and I've gone to church pretty much through all my life, through my adult life. Not as every Sunday morning as I did in my childhood, but uh, as an adult, I, what, I go to what faith were you raised in? Uh, Assembly of God, Assembly which is a of Pentecostal God. church. Yeah. yeah, it was at the, and so speaking in tongues, m- miracles, and things like that. They were also a very rule-oriented faith. See, once you get past Jewish, Catholic, Christian, uh, I'm pretty much lost. Yeah, you know, I mean, I understand Muslim, I understand Buddhism and things like that, but of the Christian religion, I get lost. When you get to Assembly of God and all those other names they've got for churches, forget it. I'm right. lost. Yeah, um, it's and there are a lot of them of God, Church of God, you know, Church of the Living God, Living Bible Church. There are a whole bunch of them, and it, you can it kind was of your first, basically. It, it was the first fad you ever got involved in. Yeah, and I, my mom went to Bible college. She went to a an Assembly of God Bible College and the whole business. So we were died in the wool. Yeah. So how did, what did your mother think of your life? My, uh, she never gave, she didn't, once I started, she saw that I could have a career and a life and my rebellion wouldn't get in the way. Then she was cool with it. You she could make okay. money out of your rebellion. Yes, exactly. As long, she just wanted to make sure that I had a good livelihood and that I was going to be, I was going to have a good life. And once she saw that I could kind of parlay you know, I could figure out. But you see, she, she's she was a good Christian. She was. That was her she, attitude. Uh, you know, uh, it's yeah. my kid. I wish I want only want what's right for her. You yeah, know? that's that was yeah. that. My parents were very genuine in the faith. I think yeah, we weren't very yeah. religious in my family, but my parents let me know I was Jewish, and you yeah. know, t- we spent we did celebrate some of the holidays. You know, the ones <laughs> where gifts were given. That's the ones we. <laughs> Ramadan isn't Ramadan coming up? Is it Monday? Ramadan. Ramadan starts, I think, on Monday. Yeah. 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 I see. I'm familiar with that holiday only because my best friend in high school yeah. was uh, Palestinian. I think Israel will look at it as a good time to kill them. Yeah. Y- you know. <laughs> um, you know. Then they can't pick up guns during Ramadan. Oh, okay. All right. Fine. You know. But I I remember when we were in uh, junior high. The fasting, the fasting was kind of uh, unique. I mean, to, uh, to, to see brown people fasting was very unusual yeah. in small towns. Well, you know, the thing is, what's strange, the, the Muslims right now are kind of pitted against the Jews. And the fact is, it's because we showed up wearing the same dress. Yeah. You know, because, I mean, right. they have, we have kosher, or they have halal. It's the same exact thing. It is same principles. Yeah, yeah. and and oh, many oh. of the holidays, which are Muslim holidays, our holidays are also they have a Jewish holiday very much near it. You know. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, geography explains a lot, and you know. Well, what's the old the old saying that somebody said once, and I. Oh, I know what it is. Is that geography? Over- geography is destiny. 
Yeah, and morality is defined by culture. Culture is defined by climate, and climate is defined by geography. So anytime I'm I'm poised to make a moral judgment on someone, I said no. Just it's remember, ge- it's, the fault is the geography. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and gravity. And speaking of I geography, know. as we're as we're playing this, you're in Europe somewhere. You're going yeah, to Portugal, and then you're going Portugal. to Spain, I guess, huh? Yes, we're going to Spain, and we're going to end up in Rome. In Rome, that's the thing. I've never Fun been. To, I've never been to Rome. That's on my bucket list. Oh well, maybe if they have city Wi-Fi, I can. We can do one of these from Rome. Yeah, we talked about. It. We're so involved last time. I just hadn't done enough research beforehand, yeah. and so now I have time. Well, yeah. you know, I would love to do them, but anyway, listen, we got to stop this one because it's time for us to go. But I'll see you again next week, okay? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Lawyer Thompson. Yay! Yay. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lori. Hopefully she'll be back next week and we can do another couple of these, but uh, she's uh, still in Europe, I guess. I don't know. I've kind of run out of people to talk to here. I guess I got to go record some somewhere. I don't know where, you know. But hello, everybody. How are you? This is a, a, a Wednesday show, and uh, we it's so nice of you to join us, okay? And uh, we have a bunch of people here waiting to come on, so let me bring them in here so they don't have to be waiting. And uh, let me see here. There they are. There's uh, Jeff, and there's uh, Charlie, and there's Brian, and there's me. Hello, everybody. Hello? Hello? Can you? Hello. What? Hello. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, got the kid with you tonight, huh? I guess. It's bring your daughter to ramble day. Yeah, well, if kids ramble, she can run the kids ramble. She can run the kids ramble. You want your own show, Adrian? Yeah. <laughs> okay. We'll give you a show. We'll give her her own show. We need a kid show on Gabnet. What, what happens when she gets more views than you? <laughs> <laughs> well, since I still get the money for the views, uh, I don't care. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. How you all doing? Doing good. Really? Yeah. Really? Good. Good. Jeff, what do you do? <laughs> Did you get in trouble with Pam or something? Oh, he's logged. He's logged. This view thing in. Yeah. He's trying to connect to his audio. Connect to your audio. Can you hear us? He can't hear us. He's been banished to the closet. <laughs> well, his, uh, his where's his uh, where's his uh, tech tech support? <laughs> <laughs> You know something? I, I am my uh, son's huh? my son's room. My son's room. He painted it black, inside. All black. Yeah. Does he know how hot that's going to get during the summer? Not very. They have air conditioning. Yeah. Do yeah. you know how much your air conditioning is going to cost you this summer? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things uh, a teenager thinks they know, but they don't have the first clue. They really don't. They don't. Yeah. Yeah. Well, is he still a teenager? I guess so, huh? He's 18. I yeah. said, where's all your money? You've been working for three years at 31 Flavors, and he has no money. Really? Yeah. So, so he That's were... a special black paint. He had to paint the carpet, too. Yeah, yeah right. He paid for that, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway. So that's why I got Adrian. Come here, Adrian. Show, show everybody what I got you. So, Adrian, tell him what tell him what I got. Come on. <laughs> oh, sorry. Go tell him. Show. Him. No, you have to. You bought it for me. I think you're gonna get your own show. You gotta be comfortable oh. on the camera. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so this is a savings challenge book. So what she does is so every every Friday every Friday I'm gonna give her twenty dollars, and what she does yeah. is, and what she does is she puts she puts in the first envelope. 
in here she puts one dollar the second one has two the third one has three and by the time she gets with this whole thing filled out she'll have over five thousand dollars so she, she starts putting it in now oh really but hey, but how much is that co- how, is how much how much is that costing you every week <laughs> twenty dollars a week it <laughs> was <Well>, five thousand <000 laughs> eventually i don't know how long i gotta figure out how long it'll take her to fill that up but, is it five dollars um, is it five dollars a week no, I'm going to give her $20 a week. So 20, so 50 is 50, 50. That's inflation for you. No yeah. shit, huh? <laughs> but um, but then when she does something good, like she got an award at school, that award I showed you. Uh, so then I'll let her spend some money on something that she wants other than candy. Uh-huh. But yeah, something like well, that. you know, Adrian, what you can do is if you make enough money, you can buy the house you're living in and kick your father out. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, so, yeah, 252 weeks. Yeah, so, oh, so, yeah. Oh, it is. That's a long time. God, I was lucky to get a dollar a like, week. Uh, four, a four and a half four. years. Four and a half years, you'll be, um, what are you now? You'll be rich. <laughs> if I, yeah, 5,000 inflation, that'll be nothing. Uh, that'll yeah. be well, still, great. you know, how old will she be when she gets the 5,000? Yeah, uh, what would we say? Four and a half, so you're eight. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, so she'll be at twelve, twelve and a half, thirteen. Okay. Yeah, but but it just for me it gives her the something to see money and how to save it and stuff like that. So yeah, and I know if you do it, something it, good, you can spend something. It so. doesn't cost you that much every week. I'd rather have it going there than yeah than on my drug. Then the three gallons of gas that it is, gas is like. Over six dollars a gallon. Yeah, gas is creeping up really fast now. Yeah. Why is it creeping up? I don't know. It just o- is overheated it's, uh, economy. Yeah, it's it was it was running about four fifty for for what I get in my car, and then now it's uh, yeah, six dollars. Oh like really? Uh, oil company's going to jack the price up just for the election, just in time for the election. Yeah, and then blame make who? it look bad for Biden. Exactly. Why are the oil companies on Biden's side, on uh, Trump's side? On Trump's side, yeah. Why? Most big companies because are Republicans. Trump gives them all those corporate tax cuts. Yep. Oh well. Anyway, so how, what, how are you going to enjoy Trump being your president? Did you say something? No end of material for this show. <laughs> you know he's very if good. If we're for, not in jail. What? If we're not in jail, he's going to lock up all of his political enemies. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank God Alex owns the station, so we're okay. We're first, first of all, uh, Alan, Marjorie wants to thank you for the uh, for the cane. She's welcome. No she problem. still likes her walking stick. And I told her, you know, this thing has much more support than those in a w- little wooden walking stick. It looks a little on the frail side. Uh, so I'm going to have to get her used to this one, you know. Is the color okay? Oh, the color's gorgeous. Actually, I should have gotten mine in that color. God, I wish I knew. Uh, that's okay. That's all right. Don't send us any more. We have enough as it is already. Yeah, well, maybe if you get a cat that needs one. A what? A cat. Oh, I see. You may have a cat that needs a crutch sometime. Anyhow. Yeah. Well, it was. It did. Well, it, tell, it, tell Marjorie she's thank you, and I'm happy to supply it. It wasn't pulled out, you know. Uh, it wasn't uh, pulled out. You know what I'm saying? All the way. So it was very short, and I thought, gee, you know, that looks like a cane that Yoda would use. <laughs> yeah, you got to loosen the thing and push the button. You know how yeah, it's Yeah, yeah, I know how to do that. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm very good at cane. I'm using it more because my feet hurt, you know, and I need it. I need it for the support. So uh, it's going to be great. Now, I also found out, you know, I've been waiting for this money, right? And mm-hmm. now that we have to fill out this thing, okay? So then on uh, last uh, Thursday, I wrote them and I said, did you get it? Because I, I not- had it notarized. I had, a, and I was at UPS, and I said, what's the closest post office? And they said, well, right here. Well, you can mail it from right here. So they stuck it in their little mail bin, and I call them. I then call, get a hold of the woman on, on Thursday, and I write and say, hey, have you gotten it yet? No, we haven't. Maybe we'll get it Monday. Monday, they don't get it. So apparently, either something happened at UPS, 
or the post office screwed up. Either either one is possible. Okay. But what about t Wednesday? What? What about today, Wednesday? Well, wait a minute. So let me finish the story. So Monday, I'm woken up by them saying, look, we didn't get it, but here's what you do. Just go down. We'll, we'll, we'll P, P, you know, PDA you, uh, what is it? A P, P, what, what are the, P, what, what's the, uh, the, uh, UPS? no, the thing where you, you know, you send a, a document. Uh, PDF, like Adobe, PDF, Adobe PDF. Reader. So I, P, she says, well, PDF, PDF it to you, and then you can go PDF. down, have it signed, PDF it back to us, and that will suffice, but we will also send you an envelope, and you can send the, the original back as well, but then we'll have it. So then I wrote, and I said, well, now how long is it going to take for us to see some kind of money? And hmm. uh, they wrote back, well, everybody else has to, has to sign theirs too and send them back. And I'm thinking to myself, I had enough trouble just getting the post office to deliver something to them back, okay? And uh, other people are just going to take their time. You know, the people who are getting like $30,000 or something, not going to send it back as fast as the people who are getting a million, okay? Right. So I'm thinking... Now they're going to take forever on this. You know, by that time, I'm not going to be able to walk any longer. I'm going to have a wheelchair, okay? Uh, and and so I uh, thought about it. I said, why am I waiting for this? I signed this thing. I signed off on it. I should get my money, right? That seems right. logical. Right. I shouldn't have to wait for all these other dunces to get theirs in, you know? Uh, too lazy. I haven't got time to go down to the uh, notary republic, uh, but I'll, I'll go do it later. You know, and so we're all sitting here waiting on our uh, money because they need everybody to sign off. I, it makes no sense to me at all. So I'll tell you the sense it makes to me. What? So you, you you give say ninety days for everybody to do it. Yeah, and after that ninety days, you can no longer get a claim, and so there's more money in the pot, and so they give everybody their portion too. Maybe. They should give everybody two weeks to get it back. But see, here's oh, the thing. Works. Also, this thing was mailed to me originally by regular mail. How do they know all those letters got to the people? Yeah. Not too smart. You know? So, I mean, there are a lot of little hookups here. And I'm thinking of writing them and going, look, I did my part. Send me my goddamn money. I can't right. be responsible, for, you know, be be responsible for other people. And p quite frankly, I'd like to have this money while I can still walk. Yeah. You know, so that got me mad. So then, that's one thing that got me mad. Okay, so to get rid of that. Okay, as, as my business manager said, I he, I was talking to him today, and I told him this story, and he he said, well, as the old saying goes, don't look a gift horse in the eye. I went, what? I said, I never <laughs> heard of that. I said, it's gift horse in the mouth. Right? You don't look a gift horse in the eye. What's he going to do? Look, blink back at you, you know. You look a horse in the mouth to see if he's got good teeth, right? So, yeah. So uh, anyway, anyway. So today, uh, Marjorie and I decided we're, we don't have, I'm on now, uh, we went up to her bank and we got me put on her account. Okay. But I've never had her on my account. So now we go down to our bank. Uh, first of all, I have to return, here's an interesting one, I had to return $5,400 to my bank because it seems they put money in my account to that amount that belonged to somebody else. That's Bank of America for you, boy. I, they, they really handle people's money well, don't they? Bank of assholes. So I, so I run down there to go take care of it, and the bank... They're taking forever. They've got only two managers on duty and one teller. Three people in the whole branch <laughs> running it. And we're sitting there and we're sitting there and we're sitting there and we're sitting there. And finally, he gets around to us and we go in. And he goes, well, I don't know what we do about this. I said, well, I got the letter from the person and here is, I'll call, write them and get their phone number, blah, blah, blah. And they, 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 she phones the, the branch. Okay, but nobody answers the phone. So finally, I gave, I said, What's your number? And she gave me her number, and then I gave it to the guy, and he called the number, and they got the whole thing taken care of. I'm working my ass off 
to take mm-hmm. care of a problem the bank inflicted on themselves, okay? And I've got to like go through all of this just to give money back? They should just want to snatch it as fast as possible with the operative word being snatch. Uh, and uh, so then we have that. Now it's part two of our time at the bank. Let's, uh, let's take care of our getting Marjorie on the account, right? And they get all the information, all the information. We get down to the last piece of information. He says, gee, I can't, I can't make this go through. We said, why? He said, look, it says that Marjorie's social security account is blocked. Apparently, somewhere along the line, she asked that it not be given out. No. She says, I can't, can't go any further until it's unblocked. Oh, what you should yeah. do is call it, right, get on the Experian site. And on Experian, just, uh, uh, you know, there's a thing there that says, don't, uh, don't block it, okay? So we're sitting there, so we go to Experian. She has it on her phone. It goes through, it looks at her face, goes through. Okay, and then uh, it says, oh, we want to make sure that you're who you are. Here, give us your phone number so we can do a, a security check. You know, we can send you a security number. Okay, fine. We've done this a million times, right? We put in her phone number. Next thing you know, it says, you know, we sent it, right? We're sitting there, and there's no text. We tried this about 10 times, and there's no text. This is Experian, okay? So we tell them, okay, well, look, we'll come back tomorrow. The next day we'll fi- finish this up. We'll go home. We'll f- get on with Experian or Social Security, and we'll get this taken care of. So we go get it. Uh, we go home, and we start calling and trying to get the Experian, and it won't let it. I, it still won't go through. I try it on my account, and immediately I get a text with, my, with the number but she doesn't get anything. Now, how does that happen? You know, makes no sense. In fact, they one time we put in the wrong number and they said, well, that's not the phone number associated with the account. So we had the right number, they had the right number, somehow Experian couldn't get it to us. So now we figure, oh, we'll just get a hold of Experian, we'll talk to somebody there and we'll clear this whole thing up. Do you know there is no way to talk to Experian? Yep. Absolutely. No way to talk to them. Not really? even to just be able, some place where I can type in and tell them your security thing isn't working. Hmm. You know? In other words, there's no way of getting into that account unless you can get that security number. And you can't let them know we can't get the security number. What are you going to do about it? You, you seem to look like you have the same problem with them, Charlie. I've had that problem before when there was another Charles Wallace doing some weird shit out there and I uh, <laughs> had to get that straightened out with, with Experian and it was a nightmare. What, getting through to them? I never did actually get through to them. Somehow or another I got through to Social Security and they verified my Social Security number and that the other guy was not me because it was a different social security number, but it took months. It literally took months. Yeah, well, we're going to go take care of her. She's going to call social security tomorrow, but I think I found another back door to Experian. So I'm gonna, we're going to try that. First. I have another number for you that I was just on the phone with them last week, and this is to their supervisory center. There's you actually one. got them on the phone? I never yeah. got them on the phone. Absolutely. You, you got you to gotta be a little rough like I was. Little, so you want the number? Little, I still have it. What is the number? Give it out. I don't care. All right. Yeah, it's 1-800-4900. One, what? Yeah, 493-1058. Yep, and, then, and the, the best time to get a hold of them is Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Yeah, but you know something? I don't know if that isn't uh, four, not 493 1058, right? Yeah, 800 493 1058. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Now, I'm just trying to figure out if if that's one of the numbers we did call and it was nothing but trouble. Okay. I mean, did did you have to put what did you have to put in before you could talk to somebody or did somebody just pick up? Uh well, you had to punch, you know, punch this, punch that tech thing, put your social security number in and then 
Uh, three minutes later, somebody answered the phone. Said, "Oh, you called at a good time. We're not very busy. Can we help you?" <laughs> well, and I, I said, "Well, I have a credit freeze, and I'm, I I want it unfrozen." Yeah, for that's a, exactly a, what we're what we're having a problem. I want it unfrozen for a few days. Oh, you can do that online. Now, could you just walk me through it? I can't figure it out. Well, but no, sure, but no you problem. see, before we could get to that point, we had to go through getting uh, uh, a security number. It wouldn't go any further with us unless we had a security number, and that security number didn't come to our text. Marjorie never got a text. We did it maybe 20 times. They may not have her number. No, they have her number. We okay. wrote for, To begin with, we wrote the number in there. You have to put the number in there. Yeah. Then they didn't. One time we put it in wrong, and they said, that does not go with this account. But then we put it in, and then it went through, and... and text to supposedly text to us nothing nothing no. now there's nowhere to go to talk to somebody well you got to get past that point there's nowhere to go to talk to somebody to say your security system isn't working or it's not working for us right and i'm thinking to myself mm. between the bank okay who only had three people on duty in this whole bank okay and uh and this thing today we were we were at our wits end Okay. I told them the guy was talking to me like this and do this and do that. And I said, you got to slow down. I'm a senior citizen. I didn't tell him how old I was. I just said, I'm a senior citizen and I'm a little slower than you. Oh, no problem. I'll slow you. I'll work, you know, and we were on the phone for a half hour to unlock the freeze that I locked in two minutes originally a couple of years ago. Is there any way that you, you know, that, you can call them tomorrow like you did if, you, if it's easy enough to do and find out if there's a number we can call because we couldn't get the security thing. No, nothing came to us on text. Uh, you I, know, I have another number, I think, that I got here that uh, is, let me see if it's the same. I, I have a group have. of numbers for Experian because they're a bitch to get a hold of. Well, here's the number I have is 831. It sounds like a new show. 831. <laughs> Finances five, five six one four, which is supposedly a different number. Yeah, let me look and see if that matches the the original number that, that gives you. No I, I had it. Hmm? What were you gonna say? I had sort of a similar problem with uh, Fidelity, and you know, Fidelity is Fidelity, but then their money is really handled by a third party, right? So, I was trying to move some stuff around, and. Um, yeah, luckily the first guy I talked to at Fidelity, he gave me their, their they have like a 401k expert phone number. He actually gave me that if I have any questions. But uh, the same the same type of thing. Man, I forget what she was asking me. She says, oh, you don't have a special blah, blah, blah number. And I said, no. Oh, she, she was trying to do something. Oh, she was trying to send me the text yeah. with the code. Yeah. And it wouldn't go through. She goes, she says, Oh, and of course it's not working right now, so I can't do that. So I'll just ask you some questions. So she asked me, what's your full address? So I think I'll let normal BS, right? Mm -hmm. What's your full address? What's this? And she says, okay, can you name some some stock of your stock portfolio or something like that? And I'm like, I have no idea. And then she asked me something else. And I said, I have no idea. I, I have yeah. all those stock plans, you know, that have multiple yeah, right, you know, things. Right, and, right. And I move that cool around time. and but she's asking like that. I'm like, oh my god. And I said, hold. Then she asked me, what's your your uh, your fidelity num account number or something like that. And I said, hold on, hold on, hold on. So I finally get on my phone and do it. And the guy from Fidelity just laughing. He's you know just to verify that it's me. And I know they have to go through their stuff, but because they can't send me the text, now they're sending me asking me all these weird, bizarre questions that I just go on my phone and check anyway. So. So I that I have one other number that's a level two or tier two supposed to be a supervisor number for them and it's 800 509 hold on a second let me get that one too yes yeah, tony's number you want my number 1-800-1-800-509 five what zero nine zero nine eight I got a lot Fine. quicker service. That that guy that I talked to last week gave me this number and hung up on me. And I thought, <laughs> well, let's see if it works. Come on, lunch. And so, yeah, yeah. So I called it 
And they said, you know, this is the level two. You got to usually go through level one. And I said, the guy gave me your number and told me to call you. Okay. And so he said, why can't you do this online? I said, you know, I'm an old man. I mean, I just, I don't get the online stuff that well. Could you just unfreeze it for me? I don't, sure, know, I don't know how upset I am about you using the old man ploy. That's my, my, <laughs> I've earned that. Okay. I've earned that. Oh, but uh, you, you know, know they, yeah. they can look me up and see how old I am, but it just, it works sometimes. They don't know. I had to send a couple wires and I went into the bank and send one wire. Like two days later, I had to send another wire and it was before a big presentation. I had to do it in, on Friday in Lodi. And so I'm doing it on my phone. I didn't really want to do it on my phone, but they're rushing me. So I put it through and I got the text saying everything is fine. Oh, it's it's being transferred. And then later on that night, I got a another te- or an, an email mm-hmm. saying, oh, it didn't go through. Something happened. I know there's plenty of money in there. I'm like, what? And so I went, I went in there and I went back into the branch again to do the wire, just like you're saying. I'd rather go in there to do it. Same with my Fidelity stuff. I go in there because... Online and on the phone, if you mess up one number or something happens, you click a wrong box, all of a sudden your money's gone somewhere else. Luckily, it just got returned. I was like, oh, shit, where'd the money go? I was worried it went to Tony or someone. Well, we were locked out of, we were locked out of one of these things for 24 hours now because we got it wrong two, three times. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean no, what, what happened? I never you know, know. <laughs> these are people, I got to tell you, these are people between the bank and these people. These are people who deal with your money, okay? Yes. And they should be available to you to help you to literally suck your dick if need be. Okay, excuse She's me. Gone. Oh, she, oh, She's gone. She's <laughs> gone. I was. I met my friend Richard. Okay. My friend, <laughs> My friend She's Richard not. sucks. So many old folks just keep the money buried under the mattress. Yeah, but, but I'm not the days, yeah. actually, I mean, I mean it's money. just uh, these are people that are dealing with your money. They should yeah. be they should be available to you to help you and so on. And in the case of uh, Experian, and who are these people anyway? These the, these used to be the uh, the uh, what do you call it? The uh, 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 where was the place you used to go to? Uh, get your, you know, get your credit rating. Credit the rating. Credit yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, okay. an, it's a, a credit reporting. You should have yeah. full access to those people, but they don't yeah. want to talk to you. Nope. Well, yeah. if you don't want to talk to me, screw you. I don't want to talk to you either. Well, getting locked out, the, the you know, we've all done this. The first, I, you know, put my username, I know it's my username, and then put it, put the password, and it says not your password. I tried it again. Doesn't say it's your. Pa- it says it's not your password. So I say, okay, I'll get a new password, right? And then you got to go through some hoop to get into there, and then you put in that password, and it doesn't let you because it says it's one of the last ones you just used. And I'm like, Jesus Christ! <laughs> I have I have Fidelity mutual funds, Brian, and I use one of them to donate money to a charity, and I found it so much easier to do it online. To just oh, really? transfer the money whenever I want to this charity and stuff like that, and I'm yeah, I might even, once you have it set up once, it's but once, once you with Fidelity as a new thing that started a year ago, if you finally get to talk to somebody, have them take a voice print of you, and you oh, yes, wife, huh? No, they they, yeah. they did that. Um, that's that's that not secret number, but that the other number that the that that's what they said. They said something. Say your full name and the the date or something like that. And I said it, and they say, "Yeah, you're, you've had your voice verified." I said, "Holy crap!" That's good. It saves a lot of time with the verification. Yeah, but now what about with AI? AI, you can replicate somebody's. Not yeah. really. Yeah, and plus the fact that I'm still. This is all very nice what you're all saying, <laughs> but, <laughs> but Marjorie still hasn't been able to get a hold of Experian, and now we call as Social Security. We figure, well, we'll do it that way. Can do it either way, right? Uh, experience just easy because you just supposedly flip a switch in the in the thing and mm-hmm. and you're good to go if you can get on there. But we don't get the security code, so we can't get on there. So now she's supposed to call Social Security. There we go. Let's call Social Security. So we call Social Security. Oh, well, thank you for coming to Social Security. And then they give you a whole speech. You know, make sure your Social Security is the, and there's going to be fraud coming to you and just avoid the fraud. <laughs> yeah. And here's how you avoid it. Okay, the wait time will be, and this is after like 10 minutes of this thing, your wait time will be 44 minutes. 
And I'm going, can our <laughs> government afford to I put a few more that. people online to take care of I get on the phone security. when they tell me that, and they say, kiss my ass, and I hang up. Hopefully <laughs> they're recording it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Tony. You know how screwed up they are, Alex? I used to have to, when I was taking care of my mother, I used to have to put them on speaker because my mother was, she didn't hear well. And she was, now, you know what I just got in the mail today? Huh. They want my mother to vote. She got jury duty. Do they not realize she's been dead for three years? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Oh, God. I told my brother, mommy's calling for jury duty. I'm going to fill this out. <laughs> it's so fucked up. Man. One like, part of the kidding. government doesn't talk to the other part of the government. They you know, can't. The, pro the, the problem they've had for the longest time is nobody yeah. coordinates birth certificates with death certificates. Why is that, you think? And because they I don't, out people were really. going around looking at people who had died and then uh -huh. going and getting social security cards and yep. so on in the name oh, of people who were dead because they had their date of birth. I didn't realize that. Yeah, and they were they got them. Oh, you wow. know, I think they've since fixed that loophole. But that's going to be a federal offense, no? I mean, oh, I'm sure it is if they yeah. catch you. If they yeah. catch you, you know. But the, but the other, the Tony Magno. So 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 Russia, Tony. So so so's giving money to a porn star, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, it's true. <laughs> He's still trying to get. I mean, there. if I if I had done that hush money deal, I'd be in jail ten years. We would have known about. It. You would have been bragging. Yeah. <laughs> I don't believe this story. Yeah, I just yeah. asked the judge in three days, three times, and judge was like, <laughs> no, 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 yeah. Yeah. I can't yeah. wait for five more days because that's when the trial's supposed to start. Well, it's yep. just jury selection. They should stall. Well, start. They should stall that one out. Well, try he keeps trying to get it stopped, my brother says. But, but he, he, he has to show up. For, I think he has yeah, to show right? up for all the. Uh, all oh, the that uh, sucks. Having to go to New York when he wants yeah. to be Alabama campaigning. Yeah. Well. Hey, you know, I mean, I, I don't think it's, any of it's going to hurt him. I think if he's found guilty and sentenced to prison, it's not going to change anything. I don't think so either. He's got a base that will be with him no matter what happens. Because so they're he, morons. Yep. Yeah. Uh, stupidity is alive and well in, in, in this country, boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it really it, is. <laughs> it really well, is. The, the, look, this thing is going on in Arizona. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, uh, what is that? Did you hear that? Yeah. Of course, abortion. I heard about it. I wouldn't be talking about it if I hadn't heard about it, Tony. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to give Tony a little bit of a break. He's a little slow tonight. Yeah, <laughs> he's looking very much tonight like Zippy the Pinhead. Do you notice that? <laughs> it's, I like the short hair. You like it, Alex? I like the short hair. No, like you, you just get a little more in a peak like this. You you look with the, with the teeth and everything. You look like Zippy the Pinhead. <laughs> it's comfortable. Like it's easy to watch yeah. it too. Uh, anyway. So, yeah. um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> in Arizona, uh, the Supreme Court down there, very wise Supreme Court, uh, decided that uh, they would uh, reinstate a abortion law that goes back to before the Civil War. Before women could vote. Before women could vote. Before, before women could before vote. Blacks, before wasn't even black, the state. Pe black people couldn't <laughs> vote. The Civil War wasn't over yet. And they passed this law on abortion, which uh, it's uh, how many years in prison, or do they just execute you and that's it? <laughs> yeah, I don't. it's some something ridiculous. Okay, yeah. they're going back to this law. I mean, come on, how bad do we have to get? Okay, shouldn't there be a, a thing that says if this law hasn't been used in the last hundred years, it you can't invoke it any longer. But no, you can. So all these other states are probably going to come up with laws that were passed, you know, in 1700s. Yeah. <laughs> Arizona, no, we gotta, we Arizona gotta, wasn't even a state at that time. You got you to be a little careful what you wish for because uh, the, you know, the, uh, the, the, uh, the Fourth Amendment or whatever it is that we're going after Trump for insurrection was hasn't been used in over a hundred years, so yeah. You know. Well, I have my questions about that one, but I mean, that, well, what was the last insurrection we had? <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. That answers that, yeah. Yeah, so you know, I mean, it's it is. absurd, absurd, absurd. So, uh, what's new in your life, Alex? 
<laughs> so my, my day was just, and then we went out to dinner tonight. We had our uh, <laughs> our um, um, dinner for our wedding anniversary, which we uh, had had before, but it was at the wrong restaurant. So Marjorie said, I'm taking you out to the right restaurant this time. And so we went out to the right restaurant tonight, and it was, it was fine. It was good. Made my teeth hurt. I don't know why. But, uh, Did you go to that chicken place you like, Alex, in Harlem? That, that's the place you usually talk about all the time. Chicken place in Harlem? Isn't there like a famous place up there? Yeah, that Popeyes. Talk about? No. <laughs> you know a neighborhood's not going good when you get a Popeyes. I'm joking. <laughs> Wait a minute. Popeyes is great chicken, my it friend. It is the coleslaw, yeah. yeah. Huh? The coleslaw. I, 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 I know the chicken, chicken is there. terrific. I mean, it, yeah. it, yeah. Bending KFC, you think? or Huh? Better than KFC? Oh, yeah, by mile. <laughs> yeah, well, at least at, at Popeye's, the chicken store. Well, you see, I, I learned years ago, I learned from Paul Prudhomme about, about Popeye's. And I said, uh, you know, what's the best red beans and rice I can get in America? And he said, Popeye's. I said, you're kidding me. He said, no. He says, I'm from New Orleans. I'm a New Orleans chef. Half the chefs, he said, who created uh, Popeyes, I trained. Ooh, huh. He said, and they make the best red beans and rice you can get anywhere. And you know something? To this day, he's absolutely mm -hmm. right. And um, in fact, I was at a restaurant one night that was a Cajun restaurant. I said, I'll have the red beans and rice. And I ordered it. And I ate the red beans and rice. And I said, well, how'd you like it? And I said... Is there a KFC near, excuse me, a Popeye's nearby? And they said, yeah, down the street. I said, I go down, take a bucket and go down there and have them fill it up for you and then serve that. And serve you know? that. Yeah. But anyway, he said that all the uh, recipes at that restaurant were made by New Orleans chefs. And they were chefs who studied under him. And uh, he said, that's the best red beans and rice. He said, but the chicken ain't bad either. You know, he said that was his favorite restaurant. But then again, he had bragging rights on that restaurant. So, you know. But uh, that's how I learned about Popeyes. And uh, we have Popeyes here. And I'll tell you, every now and then we get a bucket of chicken and come home with it and love it. You know. We also have a KFC nearby. We don't go anywhere near it. Oh, I love it. <laughs> we used to eat KFC, but I got tired of raw chicken in the center. Oh really? I never got oh, really? that. You we know, took it I'll... back three times, and I said, "This is it. I'll never get chicken." Well, I will have to say one thing about KFC, and and and, and I they have I, good coleslaw. Uh, well, more than that, um, my uh, whole thing about KFC is is that uh, their coleslaw is good, yes, but that I uh, for years loved KFC. You know, I felt it was pretty good, and I thought that the one thing about KFC that I really enjoyed was the fact that a lot of places, you know, you go to, and they got, they're great at one point, and then all of a sudden, the quality just starts to wane. It just gets worse and worse and worse mm. and worse. And I found that over the years, KFC never really got worse. It pretty much, you got the same chicken every time. I'm just saying Popeye's is better. I'm not saying that they've lost their touch over at KFC. Uh, although, didn't they come up with a, a, a what, a, some kind of, was it a sandwich of some sort recently that was kind of weird? Yeah. But anyway, hello, Kevin. Hi. Yeah, there he is. There he is. I was on mute. You were on mute. I was watching your videos, one of your videos the other day. He makes oh, yeah. videos of high school bands and so on competing or just playing sometimes right they were competing yes yes did they win uh they came in second that that week and they just had their uh regionals and they came in second so they did pretty good this this time do you have your they own started off in yeah. sixth i think in the area and ended up Improving to second, so they did pretty good. Do you have your own channel on uh, on YouTube? I mean, where you can go to Kevin yeah, Stopper. Yeah, one and, there. Yeah, yeah. Go to Kevin that Stopper, channel. and then go into there, and he all his videos are there with these bands, and it's really it's a nice thing he's doing. You know, uh, these kids deserve the the props. 
okay? Mm -hmm. It's nice that people get to see him. And plus, he has more viewers than I do. So, you know, you may as well. They're all kids. <laughs> They're all kids. I wish I had a high school that I did this show for. And then we. Oh, yeah, Mike, you can take Adrian on. What? Let Adrian do a, a, sh a, a, a half hour show. Hey, listen, I, if she wants to do a show, I'll, I'll actually allow her to do it using this, using Zoom. And then I will uh, uh, record it and we'll do the whole thing and then I'll put it up. You like that? Or do you think maybe I, her head would get too swell? <laughs> uh oh. Would this be, I, let me, I have to get dad's uh, approval on this. <laughs> I don't know. I got to check her new TikTok. She says she deleted all her old TikTok videos and she has new, more sophisticated ones on. So I got to check that. Yeah. Well, you know what I don't want? Well, she, she probably says she has no need for me. She's got TikTok for crying out yeah. loud. And with her hoochie coochie dance, I'll bet it's got a million views. No, she has no, no more hoochie coochie dances. No, well, that was what I was about to say. If she's going to do a show on Gabnet, no hoochie coochie dance. Yeah, I know. Oh, really? She was doing that on TikTok? No, she's just doing dances and stuff like that. So now she's doing, now she's doing, she's doing skincare too. I said, you're only eight years old. You have no need for skincare. She's even pre-zit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I got to check. She just started posting something. Well, that's what every young kid wants to grow up and be, an influencer. Yeah. And as I said the other day, I've decided I'm going to be an influencer for Metamucil. And, and and Jeff can join me. Live from the toilet. About, am, I, uh, am I old enough to get in? Yeah, sure, sure. sure, sure. We'll do the Metamucil record, show. They can record Jeff in the bathroom while the Metamucil's working. Jeff, <laughs> Live from the throne, you? yes. Where are you? <laughs> Live from the throne, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> who was that guy who uh, used to come on the show? And he would be on a, on a bathroom. Oh, oh, that's oh, Brian. Oh, oh, oh yeah, Brian. it was Brian. Brian. He was on the toilet yeah, yeah. all the time. Oh, yeah. Jersey, yeah. Which I thought was suited this show just to a T. Bathtub, okay. Brian. He's in a bathtub talking uh, to yeah. him. It was in the bathtub. That was it. He wasn't on the can, was he? That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's in the tub. What? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I uh, to change the subject, yeah. I, I, I finished uh, The Bear. Well, the Bear, good show. Yeah, yeah, very good show. Good show. I don't remember how yeah, it ended. Now it's been so long, you know. <clears throat> yeah, so it, it, it's good. I good, liked it good new lot. show we watched uh, yesterday. Sugar. Oh, how is that with Colin Farrell? Looks good. Colin Farrell, terrific. It's yeah, I can't wait to see the thing into it. Really, I'm going to watch it. Yeah, I'm going to put it on my. They have two episodes up. It's it's a, you know what I call it? It's kind of color, uh, color film noir. Oh, I'm gonna like it that. really it is a film noir kind of thing, and it's a you know hard boiled detective with kind of problems. Wow. You know, I like that. that What's that on? It's on uh, Apple Plus. Yeah, I like Colin Sugar. Farrell. He's really doing good. Yeah, he, he looks great as the penguin in the trailer too. I'm looking at the uh, yeah, but the, this is this is this is going to be better than the penguin. Oh, was gonna I'm be. excited to see. I got it on my watch this list. This is yeah. terrific stuff. Yeah, I will definitely check uh, it out. And. Uh, uh, what else am I watching? Manhunt. Eh, so-so. It's okay. It's yeah, not the same thing, Alex. It's a little slow, right? What? What is oh, that? Jury Manhunt? Oh. It's like so-so so far. Jury summons. For you? Yep. Got it. You got You're one? You're not the only one, Kevin. Kevin. And she's two, two days oh, ago. Don't you like how they notify you via fucking you postcard? Too. Yeah, I just I just got one today. I just did checking my mail and there I've it is. I called the number and put Wait my Wait a minute. Code how in. how old are you? Me? 67. I Don't think you I think I think you can get off of it, can't you? Oh, if I want to go. California 70. Oh, you want to go. Oh yeah, I like I like going. You like her? I hate it. It was the most boring day I ever had. I say <laughs> a day because I managed to got a lot of those, so it's just another day. Well, you yeah. know, my whole story is I was on jury duty with Steven Soderbergh. Oh, that's right. I remember you telling that yeah. story. Tell and, and we were yeah. there and they were talking a little bit and so on. Finally, it's time. We both get called into the same jury room to be eliminated or accepted. 
And uh, he goes up there first, and he says, I have to be dismissed because I have to go to Cuba uh, to make a movie. That funny. Now, that's really no excuse to get out of jury duty. That's a Trump excuse to get out of jury duty. <laughs> Okay, it <laughs> but it's not a real defense. But because he was Steven Soderbergh, the judge went, "Oh well, I understand." He he gave this whole thing about how he had to go through the the de State Department to get the ability to go down there and do it, yeah. and their whole people are depending upon him. And he gave this whole so he's he's kind of crying and everything. So now he's still in the room, and they call me up and they say, uh, 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 "What disqualifies you from serving?" I said, well, this is a drug case, and quite frankly, I don't think drugs should be illegal. I think Would they you? should be decriminalized, and I think anybody who goes to jail for it, it's wrong. And he said, next. Yeah. That was right. a good answer. Right. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. so as I'm leaving, Soderbergh is there, and he looks at me, and he goes, boy, that was a cheap way to get out of it. I said, and yours wasn't? <laughs> <laughs> the last time I got called in... And by the way, the movie was Ca the Castro movie he did. Was uh, it any good? The Castro part, well, part one and part two, or I can't remember. I think yeah, it's what it was I remember you saying that. Uh, uh, no, Che part one and part two. That's what it yeah. was. But che part one and part two. And after the movie came out, I pretty well thought it would have been better if he just stayed around for jury duty. You know? Yeah, I you didn't like it. Remember you came The well, last before. time I was there, they asked me, "Do you, uh, do you, can you be fair and impartial?" And I said, well, if the police arrested him, he's probably guilty. <laughs> Everybody's looking at me, and, and, you know, and, I'm, and I'm sitting there. And they and so the next question was, do you know anybody in there? I said, yeah, the three arresting officers over there. I, I retired. I used to work with them two years ago. Your excuse? Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. My, my old engineer, he used to say, just tell them, sh kill them all and let God sort them out. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened was I, uh, uh, I, I literally, um, they called me again after I was like 75 or something. And I finally wrote them and I said, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh, my old general manager just wrote me. Ed Cram And they decriminalized it. marijuana too, Alex, after all this. So you weren't that far off really back not, then. Yeah, but not federal. And some I think I think this may have been cocaine, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And but uh, you know, my my feeling was I would not be impartial about that. You know, I just don't think that any even drug charges for for heroin. Mm. I feel the same way. They should be decriminalized and made a, a medical problem, because that's essentially what they are. And uh, you know, so so our president. Is finally getting tough with Netanyahu. Boy, is he is did he bitch slap Netanyahu? No, he didn't. Uh, he just kind of went. He was he's kind of taking the droopy dog approach. He's treating Netanyahu like he treats the Republicans. Well, no, he's treating oh, let him. It, let me help he's you. He's treating you know? him like droopy dog would. would. I wouldn't do that if I were you. <laughs> yeah, hey, <leave> the voice. <laughs> yeah. That was for dude. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> I wouldn't uh, do that if I were you, Mr. Netanyahu. Yeah. Have you heard any of Trump's speeches uh, that lately? What? He is now, Trump's speeches, he is now at the end of his speech talking about God and the Lord and Jesus and everything oh. like that on his campaign trail because a lot of evangelical Christians voted for him in 2020. Mm -hmm. What are they going to do when uh, when uh, 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 Stormy Daniels gets on the stand and says he's got uh -huh. a small dick? I hope she does say that. Did you see the time on Jimmy Kimmel where he had Stormy no, Daniels on it and he brought out this thing and one where they all look like kind of like mushrooms. But he said, uh, which one looks like his? And she picked a real small one that really looked like a mushroom. And she said, that pretty much looks like his dick. You know? And you know he would watch that. Yeah. And I thought that was brilliant on Jimmy Kimmel's part. I mean, he brought out literally this thing with all these different, what looked like mushrooms, but they really weren't, you know, yeah. supposed to be mushrooms. And would you tell us by looking at these, which one is the closest to his size? <laughs> and she said, oh, that one, yeah. Just to get his oats up, it's funny. 
You, you this know is actually going to be a funny trial. Oh. You know. You know they will ask him about that. They will say, and they may not tell him about it, but they'll ask him in these trials mm. like this, can you describe his penis and what he looks like undressed? Is he cut? Is he uncut? Um, Stuff like that. They may not actually broadcast that, but they There might. was something, when, when they did the, uh, the uh, uh, thing with... Uh, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Clinton. Uh, when they did the Clinton, I can't remember words anymore. Clinton, when they did the thing with Clinton, uh, they asked uh, Monica Lewinsky. Monica Lewinsky, oh. was there any identifying characteristic that he had? Really? And she said, yes, he did. Uh, oh, but really? she didn't say what it was. Oh. And they didn't ask. But they, she said, "You, could, I could identify it, yes. Wow, that's like a photographic memory. What do you mean a photographic <laughs> memory? A lot of dicks look alike. Maybe yours looks different than anybody <laughs> else's. How would you know because that it thing? goes in rather like than like comes a, out. Like a, well, like didn't she mention something about, didn't she mention <laughs> something about a cigar? Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. There, he, he had her, uh, he had to put a cigar <laughs> in a certain part of her anatomy, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yeah. I have a T-shirt that doesn't fit. And to me, anymore. that's a waste of a cigar because I'm not smoking right. that yeah. one. On the band, that. it says Even Monica, and the T-shirt it says, on the T-shirt it says, <laughs> "Each right. cigar hand dipped." <laughs> <laughs> so this is going to be a fun trial, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, that's five days away, isn't it? Oh yeah. Well, yeah. yeah but then yeah. they got to do jury duty, uh, jury uh, yeah. selection. Uh, yeah, it starts Monday. It starts Monday. Yeah. I wish I were getting jury duty now because I'd immediately mm -hmm. try right. to get on that trial. You might be you able to get mine. on that one. Huh? Yeah, yeah. You know, but I mean, it's going to be uh, it's going to be quite a uh, interesting uh, slog. You know, circus. Yeah, well, Ooh. and then he's got the Georges thing coming up pretty soon, doesn't he? What's the next one? Oh, uh, is it George? It, I think it, it might, might be, be the documents thing. The documents. That's one we throwing them. Yeah, you had the guy throwing them out. Remember, we were in the bathroom or something. Who? There's so much well, shit. The, the trouble is that Florida judge is an appointee, and she yeah. keeps coming up with new shit to move it on. No, but but you no, know, she's she's done something this time that kind of moved it forward. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. She's kind of. I think, I think she feels she's getting too much heat for being too pro-Trump. Yep. And so she's now backing off on that and is starting to deny him, you know, all his uh, motions. And yeah, I well, think after the other day, that one decision she made, they said she had six solid decisions she had to make. Yeah. Six on her desk yeah. before anything can move forward. And, and so well, she's got a lot of she's got a lot of work, but it's not they're not big decisions. She just has to make them. I just don't think she knows how to be a judge. You know, it seems like I mean, she's yeah. only been in that position since 2020. Well, you don't have to be a lawyer to be a judge, do you? No, no, I don't think you know, so. although you run for being judge. So if you depends run, what depends on the state, some states the judges are appointed, right? Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I don't think you necessarily have to be a judge to be, for instance, on the Supreme you gotta, Court. You gotta understand the law, don't you? Not really. No, no, you've got law no, clerks. Probably not in civil court. Well, you've got law clerks. That's what the clerks do. Yeah, yeah, okay. that's what the clerks do, and then no, you make a decision right. based on their analysis, you know, and then you decide yeah. that a law that was done in prior to 1850 regarding abortion is legal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how many people here were alive before 1850? Would you just raise your hands, please? <laughs> Just want to get a brief idea of what we're dealing with here. Yeah, yeah it was 1864 that that law was. Was it 1864? Yeah. Oh, it was later yeah. than 1850. Well, I'm off yeah. by a few it years. It is not going to pass the courts. Well, no, they, they already not, said they're not going to. They said they weren't going to prosecute either. Yeah, the they, oh, yeah. You know, the no, fact, the, the yeah, state attorney general said they're the, not. The fact not. that they say they're not going to prosecute, fine, they won't until the next guy becomes governor in that state, yeah. is a staunch Republican, and then yeah. starts, uh, you know, hammering well, the Well, it's the DA down. that has to, and the DA was a lady, and she's... The DA she, said... They, I, think she, I think she's a Republican. 
Yeah, but she said oh, she wouldn't do. Democrat. I think there was a Democrat. Oh, Democrat. That. Yeah. Yeah, but she wasn't. She said she wouldn't go ahead and prosecute. Right. Okay. But that's fine until you get the next governor, and no, then they I get a new, that. you know, attorney general, and you're off to the races again. So what well, you Mike really want to do is you want to you want to throw this right. thing out completely. Yeah, they're a little different. Though. You want to throw this decision out completely. The and legislature that, just has to pass a new law. Well, either that, or they can put it up as a constitutional amendment in the next election in Arizona and get rid of it. Okay, yep. and institute a new law guaranteeing all people in the state of Arizona an abortion if they want it. You know. And, of course, as you know, I'm for retroactive abortion. Um, and I can, th I can think of two Trumps immediately that would be on that list. You know. Yeah, too bad they didn't sterilize Donald's parents before they had him. Yeah, well, they probably would agree with you. Uh, you know, they weren't too fond of him, actually. Nope. Too. You know, they were fond of the other son. Neither is three-quarters of the country. Well, you know... Well, who knows what's going to happen? Uh, all I know is he believes in God, and damn it, I'm for a guy who believes in God. Who can't be for a guy who believes in God? You know, Lord be with us. Let's all pray. Dear God, please make it so Trump doesn't become president. Okay, there's my prayer for today. Oh, boy. It's a silly country we live in right now. And, you know, I was telling Marjorie tonight about Israel. Do you realize what Netanyahu has done to the Jewish people? Yep. I mean, he has just put a, he's put a target on our back to begin with. And he has completely hurt all the sympathy, all the goodwill that a country like Israel had built over the years has completely been dissipated by what's going on now. And he doesn't realize that he's done that? You know, terrible, just terrible. So I'm just saying, you know, and I, uh, I, I feel bad about it. I feel bad that I have to feel guilty being Jewish, you know, and that uh, part of our lifestyle. Huh? Yeah. We well, you know, built into us. Wouldn't you agree that over the years, the sympathy of the world has been with Israel? Absolutely. For the most part, except for the Islamic nations. Okay. That's right. Uh, and uh, I think we would all agree that in the last, year, what, six months, Netanyahu has completely turned that around. Nobody's sympathetic to Israel at all, except maybe a bunch of yids living here in New York, you know, who belong to some Jewish organization that waves the Jewish flag like it was a... They have uh, destroyed the whole state. You know, the, the video pictures you see on the news all these concrete buildings are just destroyed. I know. And I think I, he wants to take a big bulldozer, push it in the ocean, and take it over. And you know what I said? I resented for years. I was, I was a kid growing up. I knew the Jewish star. I mean, it was in my every place I went. Uh, you know, when I was bar mitzvah, there was a Jewish star. It was a symbol of Judaism. When it became the flag of Israel and was on every tank going into Gaza, I said... How can you just desecrate the Jewish star that way, the Star of David? Right. And, and that really was what bothered me the most. And for years I've been talking about Israel. And then one day they were going to do something really wrong, and we were all going to get blamed for it. You know? Well, Netanyahu's trying to catch up to Trump. It, 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 believe me, I think Netanyahu's worse than Trump. Because oh, I, I do too. Oh, yeah. Trump didn't kill 30,000 people, uh. okay? Of several on, million on his watch. unless you count the women who died in pregnancy since uh or the, or, or, the, or, the, or the people that died of covid because of his policy yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah hey listen the theme's playing uh, that <laughs> wonderful dreaded theme that we have any last words jeff Good night. <laughs> where are you jeff <laughs> where are you yeah yeah man, in new york you're in new uh, york Oh, yeah. Where in New York? I didn't offer to take you to lunch, Alex. What's up with no, that? I know. Where, where in New York are you? Well, on 57th Street. Gee, you could, you could yell here and get on the show. Yeah. 
Anyway. You yeah. know, my son is here. Oh, okay. He's yeah. Sure, but you're at the Waldorf Astoria, aren't you? No, no. His son's a good guy, by the way. I like your son a lot. That's Jeff. Uh, thank you, Charlie. I appreciate hey, your you. being here this evening. I want to thank uh, Brian and Adrian for making a guest appearance on the program tonight. Alan, thank you. And Marjorie, thanks you for the cane. Uh, Tony, thank you. Appreciate it. You really do look like Zippy the Pinhead with that haircut. Yeah. And uh, finally, a uh, big goodbye to Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks to everybody. Give a big wave goodbye. I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. But there'll be another one coming together tomorrow at the same time. There'll be one coming right up on the uh, on the intersection with uh, Amy Manuel, which is next over most of the same gab net. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, you know what I tell you to do. Tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. See you later.